Greetings goons, gangsters, and gamers. It's your boy the Good Tonight. Today we're doing our review at long last. Sort of like a part one of part two. There's a lot to go. There's a lot to cover. But we're doing our review on the Opscore Carbon Composite Helmet. This one in a lovely eight M81 dipped pattern because it is also known as God's Plaid. It's a really nice job. The problem is the M81 is so nicely done. You don't actually want to wear it because you're going to get dinged up. It's not going to be as pretty. But c'est la vie. That is the life of Gia. Anyway. Carbon Composite Helmet came out as part of their SF series, which is replacing their uh, Fast series. You got, of course, your Ballistic Helmet, your Bump Helmet. Bump Helmet being a bit more newer because they did some finagling and stuff, and also came with that pass-through power ah, thing going on. They started throwing all their helmets as well. And, of course, you have the Rifle Rated Helmet. I think the Rifle Rated Helmet came out not too long after the Ballistic. The Carbon Fiber was somewhere around there, too. But there are a few significant changes. However, the most important question we're going to be trying to answer, hopefully in part one, I don't know if there's going to be a part two, we're going to try to get this done in part one, but there is a lot. You can put the helmet on, it'll protect your grape, but as you're doing the research, you can't stop the headache. You can't. <laughs> it's going to be coming. And as opposed to the uh, hard-headed veterans sort of helmet where I had to do all sorts of NIJ research and all their certifications of whether you could claim it's NIJ certified or you just say it's up to NIJ standards. Big shenanigans, but there was a lot of documents to go through. As far as the carbon fiber helmets, which are mostly run by your more high-speed guys, they, um, yeah, there's uh, not a whole lot published, unfortunately, so I've had to be doing all my carbon fiber sort of research into more of, like, motorcycle helmets and the whole uh, football helmets. And, of course, fortunately, my brother was into the whole Scout Sniper Force Recon thing, so he had a... Uh, he has a few things. I haven't got his opinion yet. I would like to get some word from him before I do a part two when we get to more of a finalized version. But, gonna be looking at the important question. Bump helmets, carbon fiber helmets. If you don't need the ballistic portion, which one should you get and why? I'm gonna finally undo this chin strap. This thing's been on my head for a hot minute. So, the carbon fiber helmet naturally weighs practically nothing. I think most of the weight is coming from the Monyan plush I've got up here because he is also in M81, so... Stylistic choices. It's odd! So, M81 carbon fiber helmet weighs practically nothing. Insanely durable helmet. And at a, uh, decent price range. Now, that said, they also came out with their bump helmet. Which, bit heavier, not a lot. These are still insanely light, but there is a noticeable weight difference. Yeah, so, right off the bat, just sort of like eyeballing it, this helmet is heavier with nothing else on it than this helmet is with the plushie. So, it's a very small difference, but it w can be noticeable. So, of course, previously with the Fast Helmets, I think we gotta talk about the Fast Helmets before we really get into this. The Fast Helmets, their bump helmet wasn't, didn't have that glass fiber in four sort of thing. You could bend it, the shroud was molded into the helmet, and you didn't have a whole lot of options. But the bump helmet was relatively cheap. And of course, if you bump it, you might crack it, you might break it, but that's okay, it's a bump helmet. Um, the carbon fiber helmets, significantly more durable. Harder to break, they're uh, Rigidness actually distributes the force across the entire helmet. I think these do a job closer to that now with the uh, bump helmets being a lot more firm. But you're still like, if you take a really good wata judo chop to the side of the head, there's a chance this will crack. Whereas with the carbon fiber helmet, it will take a Herculean judo chop to cause significant damage. And then, of course, you got the ballistic helmet, which does all the super cool protective stuff that we more or less covered in the HSV helmet with the NIG certifications. But that's really more of a direct action sort of thing. So, if I had to break it down, if I had to answer nothing else, if we wanted to get to the bottom line up front, why do you care? What's the answer between the bump helmet and the carbon fiber helmet? Which one should you get? And as with all gear, it depends. However, I will basically put it this way, because I like People like simple answers. The brain wants to oversimplify everything into bam, bam, bam. Nice, clean, organized system. So, effectively, this would be your training helmet. Gain of the Hilo Dunker, training helmet. You're wandering around a ship doing a dry fire with a big old blue body gun, training helmet. 
If something goes wrong, you can stop the training. If this gets broken, stop training, get a new helmet, or cycle out, whatever you gotta do. But this will protect your grape, particularly in the whole training ordeal. Of course, you got the holes in it for better ventilation, you get your water drainage. So yeah, you could do the helodumper. You could do all sorts of easy training that does not require you to have ballistic protection. Bam, simple. The carbon fiber helmet, being significantly lighter and arguably nicer. This is your, I think it's more of your Reese sort of amphibious operations. You're doing operations. We are not exactly anticipating to be engaging the enemy you're up for in a firefight. Whereas this would be more if you're wearing your chest rig, you probably got your ah, beautiful boonie cover on. You're out in the environment. You've got this super light helmet because it's gonna get dark you're gonna need nods. So you throw this in the back of your uh, friggin' beaver tail pack, Eagle Industries beaver tail pack, and so you can mount up night vision. So it starts getting dark, you go, oh hey, I'm gonna need to see with my night vision because we got a pool security and all that. So you pop off the boonie, you throw this guy on, set up your counterweight, your night vision, boom, you're doing operations. You gotta climb a sheer cliff. You don't wanna fall off a cliff and uh, bust your head open. Probably still hurt your neck significantly, do bad things to your uh, bone snake, but bad things to your bone snake, is that's just part of enlistment, let's be honest. And if you don't want your bone snake, your back, your spine, to be okay, probably be in the Air Force, right? The Coast Guard, maybe? You know, the Coast Guard can get a little wild when the cocaine comes around, but you get the idea. This is a good middle ground. You're not expecting rounds to come at you. You're not expecting large explosions. You're kind of getting in, you're doing your little reconnaissance, you're getting your sat phone radios in, you're all your, all that stuff, you gotta climb through trees, you need to be in less permissible environments. You're not really excited to come, of course you're gonna have your rifle because you never know, and all your magazines so you can break contact, but this is the helmet for that. Jumping out of a plane, I know the, uh, was it like the Red Devils or whatever, they were using the older school carbon fiber helmets, and that was the big deal. And of course the fact that weighs nothing means you can move faster, you can move farther, you're going to be cooler, you can still drain out your water if you're doing amphibious operations. It lets you do a lot of things. So these do have a unique place, particularly among special forces, all your high-speed, low-drag guys. And then lastly, because we're still basically finalizing this, your more ballistic helmets, which maybe got my got mine, this is the most tricked out because this is the one I wear the most. Your ballistic helmets, if you're doing, well, you're expecting contact. You're expecting to be in it. You got your plate carrier. You got your ballistic helmet. You're ready to rock and roll, <laughs> effectively. So this is the thing when uh, you're generally not going to get shot in the head, preferably. <laughs> That's a big thing with the uh, all the research and stuff they did. A lot of it is rounds are impacting off concrete, bits of concrete and debris turn to spalling. That's freaking flying into your helmet. This will stop spalling. Direct impact, anything larger than a, uh, is it like a handgun? You don't want to get a handgun hit either, that's going to be a nasty headache. Like, doing research on helmets, <laughs> kind of headache, but possibly more permanent. You don't want TBIs, if you got rounds impacting dirt in front of you, you want to have your helmet on, so it's stopping all that impact and force and keeping your head safe, keeping you in the fight. And, you know, but of course, that all comes at the cost of weight. This isn't a terribly heavy helmet, but as you had in your camera, your lights, you know, Princeton Tech, so you can read in the dark, in case you have some uh, cool graphic novels, maybe some Black Powder Red Earth, maybe some, uh, maybe you're reading Tin Man by uh, good old Mr. Shepard in the dark. I mean, you probably should be doing that on a mission, but yeah, you got Meteor Pros, all they all use the same mount sort of stuff going on. This is your combat helmet. At your high speed operations helmet, climbing, climbing mountains, whitewater rafting, all that crazy stuff. And then your training helmet. So basically training, um, what is it, low intensity operation, reseed or airborne ops, all that stuff, and then combat operations. That's the bottom line up front. That's the simplest I can break it down to. And of course it is it's so much worse. I don't, I don't want to read online anymore. But now the carbon fiber helmet. So basically, they do testing, they do the same sort of modified test on both the bump helmet and the carbon fiber helmet. And the testing is, oh hey, how, many, how much force does it take before 
does it hold up to like was it like 40 pounds of force or 180 pounds 300 pounds of force from the top stuff like that and they both pass the same testing so if they both pass the same testing does that mean they are equally as strong and you would kind of infer that but no that's an oversimplification the carbon fiber helmet is significantly stronger and lighter however how much stronger and lighter they don't want to tell me, which is why I'm thinking about doing a part two if I'm ever able to get that answer. But carbon fiber helmets, I know it's particularly with uh, motorcycles and stuff, they can be super thin. If you look at that, it's practically paper thin. I think uh, that's a bit thicker, ain't it? Yeah. So this guy is a hair thicker, which is probably where more of the weight comes in. This guy's thinner, weighs less, but this is also stronger than this, which is, um, again, training operations. Uh, it's important so I can get nothing else through your brain and let me get that. That's as simple as it gets. Just talking about it's giving me a headache. So, let's talk about a few other things that come with before we get too much farther. So, your bump helmet, I've got the older mounts on here because I swapped it out with the ballistic like I said I would do in the video. Some people said I was a dirty pants on fire liar, but no, it is done. I had to change out the screws, but I got it done, so don't need the whole wire pass through because this is more of a training helmet. This does come with the cool shroud, the modular bungee shroud, and as you'll notice, I've got this big old black piece of Velcro up here. Reason being, I want to be able to mount a camera in case I go run the stairway to heaven for in a future video for fitness stuff. It doesn't have the, uh, where's that cut off there? Let me, I'm sorry, Mr. Molnian, I gotta take you out for a second. As you can see with the, uh, this is the same Velcro as the ballistic helmet, which adds in that cool little V. You can see the Hellstar patch is on there. That matches up. But then up here at the top, you're missing those uh, three parts that make that really cool sort of a... Uh, I don't know what you'd call it. It kind of looks like a cool ghost face, like from an old uh, NES video game or Atari or something. If you just look at the Velcro, it kind of looks like the face would be like, woo, and you'd have to be like, ah, and run away from it, you know? It's important, it's important, trust me, it's important. And you got the two up here on the front, in case you want to mount stuff on there. This does not have the ones on the front. And then they got the same uh, stuff sort of going on the side up until there. So this is five more pieces of Velcro. If five more pieces of Velcro is really important to you, then, you, then you're going to want the carbon fiber helmet, all right? <sighs> oh, boy. Now, additionally, um... Well, see, so yeah, these all come with the same pass-through stuff sort of there. Now, this one, this is important. If you're not planning on swapping out the pads with the uh, 4D upgrade or anything like that, then this comes with your stock standard pads. You got the uh, big old comfy pad back here on the nape. And these are like your stock pads. These are perfectly fine. You don't need to upgrade to the 4D. It's a bit more comfortable. But this is also sufficiently comfy, or as opposed to their older uh, fast style helmets. Oh man, I was not a fan of those. And of course, they all have the same mount that pins up here, like the uh, Team Windy helmets did. It doesn't wrap around the uh, front, you know, like into a little skull crusher sort of design anymore. So that comes with this. Why is that important? Because going back to the freaking bump helmet we got here. Now, I got the nicer padding in here because this was extra when I swapped out the 40 pads on the ballistic helmet. What it comes with stock standard is this weird sort of like felt stuff. So this is less comfortable. It's probably great for not retaining water and uh, being lighter weight, but it's just, I don't know, something about the way it like rubs on your head. It, it I mean, it's kind of, it's not too bad, but if you're gonna notice if you just get the bump helmet and you get the carbon fiber helmet when you switch between the two you're gonna be like I don't know about this man and then this comes on the uh, Nate pad I actually got the um, the 4D pads came with some extra like different sizes so there was an extra Nate pad sort of a piece here so I put the Nate pad back here so it makes the helmet a bit more comfortable and of course that's from the other one generally wouldn't come with that it also does not come with the where did I put it the helmet bag Helmet bag, come to me, yes, there we go. The helmet bag here, the cool Opscore helmet bag that everyone wants so desperately for some reason, does not come with the bump helmet. Exclusive to the carbon fiber and the uh, ballistic helmet, probably comes with the uh, rifle rated helmet too. I don't know, I'm trying not to wear super heavy helmets anymore because I had a Mitch and all that fun stuff back in the day. And even without anything else on it, that's gonna give you a headache. So, 
ounces equal pounds, pounds equal pain. All right, so that's pretty much the main things between all those. So yeah, um, it doesn't come with that. It comes with those basic pads. It still's got the super comfy sort of like helmet setup. If you swap out those front and rear pads though, then this is once again a comfortable helmet. Although it is wild that it's just a little bit heavier than the carbon fiber. How strong is the carbon fiber? That's what I would really like to know. And of course, you can mount all your ear pro and stuff. Actually, let me, uh, I pulled the, yeah, I pulled my carbon fiber mandible out because carbon composite. Well, I think the mandible is also just called like carbon composite ATV. There you go, ATV ops. That was another big one you're going to want, not necessarily a ballistic helmet on if you're just doing like reconnaissance stuff. So this should, in theory, pop into here. See if I can find it. There's one, there's two. Come on. Oh, there we go, yeah. So you could, you could <laughs> mount your uh, carbon fiber mandible on here. You can throw on your step and visor and your ready to rock and roll, bop, bop, bop. And if you crash because you're silly or whatever, then big old impact, fine. Training helmet, big old impact, might crack, might be okay. Who can say? And of course, then uh, with the ballistic helmet, with the ballistic helmet, you got the weight of the helmet itself kind of adding strain to your neck as you bop around. Bah. Oh, ooh. There we go. Oh, that's way better. So yeah, another thing to consider. So I can't really, I can't, I can't just hand you the helmet through the, uh, through the internet. That would be cool, but it is insanely lightweight. And a lot of the times, if you need to run night vision, night vision can get relatively heavy to begin with. Throw on your counter pack, and you have a comfortable way. Now, some people like to talk about like the skull crusher and all those crazy little mounts that you can wear over your boonie hat. And I'm gonna say, don't necessarily do that. I've tried it before and the nods are unstable. This is a very stable base. You're going to want, if you're going to be running nods and doing cool things, and you're not expecting to have like insane contact or whatever. This is a very, very wonderful way to do that. Because yeah, again, it weighs nothing. So all the weight of the nods is real, almost the only weight on your head. And that makes it easy. If you want you to run a camera, it'll be a lot lighter on here. I've still got mine on the ballistic helmet, but you can run it on here and say so. Let me see how heavy that is. Entirely a curiosity because the Mohawk is not necessarily a super light camera. I pulled it off there and that will sit right about there. Oh yeah. This still weighs practically nothing. I'm sure as I added the ear pro and stuff, it'll still be pretty light. You can definitely, you can kind of feel this a lot more on the uh, ballistic helmet because the weight ounces the pounds and all that stuff again. So this is a... Uh, if I need to just do that, actually, I'm probably going to use this when I go up the stairway to heaven, whenever I film that video. Got to lose maybe another two or three pounds before I'm feeling confident. Otherwise, I'm going to get like halfway up and uh, perish into the great beyond, which is something I'm actively trying not to do. Hence the collection of helmets. <laughs> Ooh, actually, when I do get to go on a helicopter, this will be my, this will be my helmet of choice. This is coming with me. That, the camera, the year pro. And then your little retention lanyard. Good to go. So that's all I got. I'm going to do a lot more of a deep dive into the carbon composite as I get a chance. I do think the, um, the slots are a little bit different too, aren't they? Yeah, so this one's got sort of like a, um, a recessed slot as it sort of like dips in before it slots out. And this guy, I guess because it's so thin, it just immediately slots. We both got eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, so you can still count. Eight and eight. So cool. You know, this felt insanely light to me until this got here. Now I now I have the audacity to say this is a little heavy. Alright, so all that out of the way. Coming to the end of the video. Thanks to my patrons, the uh the Weepy Lamb and um Dark Magic96, who are helping support this channel. There is a Patreon which goes a long way in getting these. If you need me to uh, review anything in particular, then having the having you on the Patreon and you put in the suggestions, click one and two together, be uh, a bit more 
a bit more able to. Um, I'm, I'll do this as quick as I can. I got lots of suggestions coming through from a certain someone who's always down in the comments telling me about crazy stuff I might not have heard of that I think I'll look into in the future. But yeah, so ultimately, to answer the question, coming down to the end, do you need the pump helmet or do you want the carbon fiber helmet? And a lot of people, they get the carbon fiber helmet because they want to throw on the ballistic applique as they're doing with the uh, sort of coxswain helmet not too long ago. And if you need to do that, just get the ballistic helmet. Just save up the more, the bit more. Well, not a bit more. It's like twice as much. You get the ballistic helmet. If you're looking for something to just do like BB Wars, LARPing, BB Warrior on the weekend, or you're going to wear out a skateboard, you're not going to be going like crazy high speeds to where a crash can be a bad, a really bad day, you can get the bump helmet. Bump helmet is sufficient. It'll do most of your needs. If you have a need to climb up the trees, go over mountains, you're going to ride a jet ski, you're going to do all that stuff, then I would say drop the bit extra and get the carbon fiber helmet because the comfort and the lightweight will go a long way. But if you don't need the carbon fiber helmet, it seems a bit extra to you and you think a bump helmet will suffice, then I would go with a bump helmet because it is about half the price. And then the carbon fiber helmet is about half the price of the ballistic. Yeah, it's sort of a tier system going on here if you ask me. So. I think this is nice. The uh, M81 is almost too nice and to almost makes me not want to use it because I don't want to damage it, but that's the whole point. Better to damage the helmet than your head. So that's more or less the video. Um, you could probably get away just fine with a bump helmet if you're going really high speed, really crazy, and you're afraid that this will crack and leave you exposed. You're really going to the absolute apex, pushing yourself to the maximum, then you're going to want the carbon fiber. That's about the best way I could do it. If you're expecting any sort of rounds, even sim rounds, coming your way, go with the ballistic. Don't risk it. Your eyesight, head, and all that stuff, it's not going to be worth it. You don't want to cheap out and get that one really bad ding, and you wake up every morning for the rest of your life with the worst headache ever. Don't do it. Protect your brain. Don't do drugs. <laughs> he says, sipping caffeine out of a uh, carbonated beverage. So, that's all I got for you guys. Um, for this video, if I get anything crazy, there will be a part two. Hopefully I do find something crazy. I'm actually kind of hoping some cool stuff. There's definitely people out there who've run carbon fiber helmets. Well, like my brother, I'm sure there's other people out there who've done all sorts of crazy stuff. Who've probably actually seen carbon fiber helmets get cracked or whatever, and they could give very useful information down in the comment section below. And I'll give all those a nice little heart react and a thumbs up and all that, so... That's all I got for you guys now. Hopefully that helps answer your question on which one you should get. If I make a part two, then I'll have more details on exactly how much it takes to crack the carbon as opposed to the bump helmet. So cheers, everyone. Stay chivalrous. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm looking forward to making more as free time permits. And hopefully sometime in the future, there'll be significantly more free time. We will see. So cheers, everyone. Stay chivalrous. And, um, we're M81, honestly. Uh, maybe not in town. Maybe not in town. We try to be normal and somewhat civilized. But any other time the opportunity presents itself, you can wear M81. I heard Flectarn's really cool. I've never really been a big Flectarn guy, but it looks neat. Not a big guy of the Cryptek, though. Cryptek was weird. I don't know. It just reminded me of... Uh, what was that thing? Freaking Mandrakes. I don't know why. It always reminded me of Mandrakes, but... Yeah, so... That is the video. Everyone, cheers. Stay chivalrous. Sure I'll catch up to you. Oh, no, man. You guys want to say anything else cool with the helmet? Woo! Can you rotate shapes 3D in your head? Some people can't. Terrifying. Let's see. How I can get. Let me get a thumbnail. Let me get a thumbnail. Let me just. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. All right, everyone. That's, that's all I got. End of the show. Everyone go home. Go do something else. Cheers. See ya!